everyone and welcome back. So today we are talking about One Night in Miami, also known as the coolest movie ever. And also just one of my favorite movies I've seen, just period, end of story. I felt each and every one of these characters to the core. I felt like a fly on the wall. I was smiling ear to ear. In short, this film is about four legends who meet up on the night of Muhammad Ali's championship to discuss the responsibility and burden of being successful black men during the civil rights era. And the whole movie is in conversation, the crux of that conversation being how after all this time kind of fighting for a seat at the table, how is it that they can't get a word in? And despite their success, they're still on the outside looking in and this is established like right at the start of the film with that whole sequence between Jim Brown and this like family friend. So they're sitting there, they're having a pleasant conversation and everything is going well up until the end when Jim basically offers this family friend to kind of help move furniture. And this friend with just a stone cold look on his face, a smile on his face, total indifference tells him that like, yeah, we don't really allow black people in the house. And this, like starting off the movie this way does one of two things. The first, it shows that money does not transcend racism and second it was a really good introduction to the conversation being had as a whole throughout this movie so all four men in this movie are at a kind of a fork in the road and the question being asked here is where do we go from here right malcolm x is about to leave the nation of islam uh, muhammad ali is about to become muhammad ali jim brown no longer wants to play football and sam cook feels like a total sellout with his music so the only way I can organize my thoughts and ideas is by emphasizing this collaboration between Regina King and Kemp Powers because it's the screenplay and the directing that created this atmosphere, this tone, this vibe, and this dynamic between these four men that is really just unreal, right? I mean, they are far from being best friends and specifically I'm talking about Sam Cooke and Malcolm X. I mean, these two kind of battle throughout the film to expose and isolate one another, when in fact they have a lot more in common than they would like to believe. And then you have Jim Brown and Malcolm X who are basically trying to create unity through ice cream. And this is a side note, but the actor who plays Muhammad Ali, like I, f I felt his youth, you know, he really seemed like this 22 year old kid, like just the vibe, like each one of these characters are at a different stage in their life. and. Each actor is really doing the most to project that and I and I felt every minute of it. What can I say? I laughed, I cried, I was smiling ear to ear. And you have four icons here, each of them having found their calling, fulfilled their potential, and despite all that, like as you're listening to their conversation, it still feels like they're chasing the Joneses. And I think through the dialogue that Kim Powers was able to, really, I mean, he deserves like all the Oscars for this you feel the pressure that each of these men had in terms of not just fulfilling like the public's expectation and their family's expectations of themselves, but their own expectations of themselves. I mean, each of these men, they're coming from four completely different vantage points, right? So you have Muhammad Ali who, you know, he has this skip in his step. He's such a kid, like he has so much optimism. His life has yet, like it's just getting started. You have Sam Cooke who pretty much cracked the code in terms of generational wealth, like he owns his own music. And then you have Jim Brown who, despite his success, still can't go into this guy's house. And then finally Malcolm X who, out of the three, is the only one kind of like really on the front lines. And he's really fighting the day-to-day -day battle, right? Like, let, like he sees the struggle that people have just to breathe, let alone become millionaires, fulfill their potential. and you know, do all this stuff. So because of all these kind of different vantage points and each man's individual like life experiences, what happens is there's like a failure to communicate. And I think what Kemp Powers does brilliantly is show how through their disagreements and through their kind of different ways of seeing the world, the overall importance of just not, of not only like cooing the table or finding a seat at the table, but destroying it and kind of building a new one where all these disagreements and vantage points are a source of unity instead of sort of friction and fracture and disagreement and everybody kind of arguing with each other. And so all this hope in this movie, all this promise, uh, this menace in the air, this worry, this all this stuff, 
it kind of builds up to one of the most perfect endings that I've seen in a long time. And it was brilliantly articulated when Sam Cooke basically puts his heart and soul into a change is gonna come. And I knew it was gonna come, like I knew this song was coming, but watching him kind of sing it live on television and in the background you have Malcolm X with his like autobiography was just like, it was just like heart stopping. And it was a somber ending, but I thought it was a perfect ending because it communicated a few things, right? Like these four men, by the end of the film, they kind of go their separate ways, specifically Malcolm and Muhammad, right? So Muhammad Ali decides to go with the Nation of Islam instead of following Malcolm X. And I think what this ending did quite beautifully, quite simply, is really show through the tone, the vibe, um, what it effectively communicated, at least for me, like by the end of the movie is how each of these four men were able to kind of subvert expectations of themselves, kind of take control of the narrative, carve out their own path and kind of do things as, as they want, kind of free from fear and expectations. So the screenplay along with Regina King's like, like brilliant directing, I think what made this movie special for me personally is that it humanized these four legends and it kind of showed them as just like regular guys, right? Like they have the same fears, worries, wants, needs, uh, expectations as the next guy, right? And the simplicity in how they were able to do it through dialogue and through, like, I don't know what to say. Like I was, this is just one of my favorite movies, just period that I've, I've seen like period, end of story, not of the year. So I invite all of you to watch it. For those of you who did watch it, please let me know what you think and I will catch you on the